Hi, this is Heidi Gaiman from ilovemyshepherd.com with this week's Chasing Freedom study. This is our study of Galatians, and this is video number three. We're going to talk about today, Open Your Eyes is the title. Open Your Eyes. We'll talk about how God opens our eyes, what he's doing with that, some closed eye problems in the Galatians and in other parts of scripture, and how he works the spirit in us to open our eyes wider every day. All right, so before we start, here's the question is, what have you discovered in life that was surprising? Something that was shocking that you didn't expect. This isn't the way you thought the world worked, right? Or just something silly that's surprising to you, something that has been surprising in your life. Uh, I think about my giant Labradoodle Every time I come home, he's so excited to see me, and he just like runs, 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 and he's 50 pounds of love, and so he just kind of barrels into you, and every time it surprises me, which is really silly. I should know better by now, right? But instead, he's seven months old, and he's just so sweet, and I'm always like, oh yeah, I forgot, you're huge, our other dog is tiny, and um, you always are just a bit much, and you can take down my person, uh, but he does it in love. So have you ever thrown a surprise party for someone? Have you ever been on the, um, you know, giving end of surprises? Uh, sometimes I think about things that are uh, maybe fairy tales that we have to come to terms with as children that, that surprises us that those aren't real. I won't name names, right? But what has surprised you in this life to find out? Uh, my husband and I did a podcast recently where it's one of our Jesus and Everything series on I Love, the I Love My Shepherd podcast. And it was about Pringles and how my husband is surprised by the fact that um, Pringles are powdered potatoes that are molded into a chip shape. He thought they were cut. So uh, he was surprised and not in a good way, not very happy. So what has surprised you in either a good way or a negative way uh, that has opened your eyes to something in this life? Um, scripture is full of things that are eye opening. And I think one of the reasons that we don't open the word is because we don't want to have open eyes. We'd rather stick our head, you know, in that sand as foolish people, uh, cause it's a little more pleasant sometimes we miss out on so much and we miss out on such abundance that God gives us in his word and in this life. Uh, but the reality is that sometimes having our eyes closed seems more comfortable. Uh, this week's study has been chasing foolish freedom and open eyes and open hearts, and we'll see how those two things connect. It's really easy to settle for foolishness uh, because it seems easier to bury our heads in the sand. It seems easier to ignore the hard stuff, but God invites us to freedom in open eyes. And it, we, it gets a little easier as you go along and you open your eyes and God shows you and then you open your eyes and God shows you. Uh, but sometimes it's still just like feet in the mud. This is hard and I don't want to do it, God. We're going to look at Galatians 3, 1 and 2 today. That's going to be our primary passage. And I want you to look for three of these messages that Paul has in here. Three messages from Paul. First, God has done so much and done it visibly. He works, yes. He doesn't reveal everything to us. We're waiting for a day when everything will be revealed to us um, when Christ comes back. But he has done a lot and done it visibly. Uh, and then also, why would we prefer blindness to sight? Why? Just why? Sometimes you have to throw out that question. Why? Why would we prefer blindness to sight? And we'll kind of work through some of those reasons we do that. Um, and why they're not working for us and they're stealing our freedom. And then also the spirit wants to do more for us and how he does that. How does the spirit work to open our eyes and open our heart? So first name anything that God has done for you before your eyes. If God does in fact work, name something that he has revealed, that he's shown you in his word about himself, something he's done uh, through people in the Bible or in your own life. When you look around, how has God revealed himself to you? So think of that while I read Galatians 3, 1 and 2. 
Galatians 3, 1 and 2. Just hear what Paul has to say, these three messages. O foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? It was before your eyes that Jesus Christ was publicly portrayed as crucified. Let me ask you only this. Did you receive the Spirit by works of the law or by hearing with faith? Did you receive by works of the law or by hearing? Faith certainly does come by hearing and hearing the word of God and hearing one another proclaim it. So tell me, what is something that God has done before your eyes? Throw it up in the comments. I'd love to hear it. I think about uh, just like obviously life-changing things like the fact that when my children were born and the, this like love that God has that he puts in you as a parent uh, is pretty shocking. And uh, it's certainly him at work because on days that I don't feel so loving, God is still just overflowing love into my children from me. And uh, that's such a gift. I'm so thankful to God for doing that. And then I just pray that he works in me to open my eyes to see how he can do that more every day and teach my kids about his love through the work of us as parents. Uh, that's one I kind of thought of. Another thing I've seen God do before my eyes is uh, just work in healing people. You know, I used to work at a pregnancy center where women came uh, who were considering abortions and we were able to counsel them and work with them and they had to make their own choices. But to see God bring healing in the moments he brings healing is just wild. Uh, when the, our eyes are opened and we see God does love me. I remember so many women, uh, one woman in particular, I can hear her saying like, no one's ever told me that they love me before. Uh, and hearing that God does is so meaningful and so healing for our hearts and our minds. Um, just different ways. Watching my husband develop as a leader, as a pastor, uh, God revealing himself in that work because we just, nothing like that happens on our own. God doesn't, uh, we don't make ourselves better people. Like God is working in us when we see that happening. So throw up yours. What has God done before your eyes? All right, chasing foolish. So why? Why in the world, Paul says, oh foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? It was before your eyes, before our eyes that Christ has done his work. And it certainly has been before our eyes. Sometimes I think we think that we got the raw end of the deal because we live in this century and we aren't able to see Jesus with our eyes. But let's hear from a story in John 9 from what happened. These people were right where we were, we, where we are, and they saw Jesus before their very eyes. Um, let's learn a little bit about blindness from John 9. Let's find it. John 9, 1 through 12. I'll read this story of a man born blind. As he passed by, he saw a man blind from birth, and his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, It is not that this man sinned or his parents, but that the works of God might be displayed in him. We must work in works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Having said these things, he spat on the ground, made mud with the saliva. Then he anointed the man's eyes with the mud and said to him, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which meant scent. So he went and washed and came back seeing. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar were saying, is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some said, it is he. Others said, no, but he is like him. He kept saying, I am the man. So they said to him, then how were your eyes opened? He answered, the man called Jesus, made mud and anointed my eyes and said to me, go to Siloam and wash. So I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, where is he? He said, I don't know. <laughs> so I, this story is obviously about the way that God heals blindness in the man. But more than that, I think we get this bonus story of these people who cannot see what's right in front of them. They, he was the man. He was blind. He's not blind anymore. God works in healing here, and they don't want to see it, or um, it's just too unbelievable. So they sink back into their foolish thought of, well, it must be somebody else, you know? Um, well, it can't be the Messiah come to us on earth. Uh, they want proof, too. They're like, 
where is Jesus? Well, where's the at then? And the guy's like, I don't know, but I know that I'm healed, <laughs> right? And the story goes on and there's more to be heard about that. Um, but I think we need to admit here that this is our default. We are always looking for the, the what, what God would call foolish side answer. We're always looking for an excuse that it's not God. Our original sin in us, the old Adam, our sinful selves want to say, well, let's just explain it away, right? We have all of our earthly ideas of what goes on with healing and with um, people coming to Christ and with God working things in our own lives. Uh, you know, I talked about my children and just recognizing the fact that God brings our children into this world, that he uh, works in them, and that even in my sinfulness, when I am not a very nice mom sometimes, God works in that uh, he, you know, I confess my children and I talk about it and he absolves us, he forgives, he absolves me. And so much of his work is done in that. I would rather, that didn't happen, yes, yes, yes. Uh, but God opens my eyes through those experiences and uh, works the spirit in me to be uh, just a different person because of the work of Christ in me, because of the spirit. Uh, but our default is, I don't want to see. I don't want to see. Jesus instead comes intimately into our lives, like he came into the man's life. He, you know, spits, makes mud. This is such a weird healing that he does. And he heals in a lot of different ways in scripture. But then he anoints, it says, anoints the man's eyes with the mud and tells him to go wash. How intimate. It reminds me of creation in that place in paradise when God created Adam and Eve with the dust with his hands. Um, in such a way, God intimately heals him and he intimately heals in our life when he reaches in to our difficult, to our stuff, to our um, blindness and opens our eyes. Blindness, we learn here, isn't always about knowledge. It isn't always about us learning something. These people had knowledge. She said, this was Jesus. He healed me. Here's the knowledge. But it's also about engagement in the knowledge. Are we interested in hearing truth? Um, are we engaged in what God has to say? And I think that's a cool thing we learned from here. The people just wanted to disengage. They wanted to tune out, right? They wanted to check out instead of checking in and hearing who Christ was. And we certainly do the same. That's what was happening with Paul and the Galatians. He tells them it was before your eyes that this happened. Uh, don't put that aside. You know, maybe some of them, this is the early church, so maybe some of them were in the mob and did see what happened to Jesus. Maybe some of them saw in the way that they were, you know, present in the a region and they heard of it uh, firsthand knowledge from eyewitnesses, just like this man, like telling them what happened. Um, we can certainly be the people who, who just check out because it's easier, because uh, it seems easier, which we'll talk about in just a second. If we look at the Greek for foolish in Galatians, oh, foolish Galatians, and we don't know how Paul said it, whether he said it, you know, with his heart uh, or whether he was angry, uh, we don't know. But the Greek root word for foolish here is enoetos, enoetos, and it means mindless or thoughtless. We can certainly turn off our mind, right? I think of when uh, kindergarten teachers or preschool teachers say, turn on your listening ears. You know, it, it does make a difference when we pull on our ears uh, and we remind ourselves to listen. Maybe we should all do that before sermons or all do that uh, before we open the word of God and listen to his word. Um, we can check back in. So what are some ways that you use to check back in? How do you help yourselves remember to tune into the word? Whether that is in your home, looking at the scriptures uh, written out for you in the Bible, or whether it's listening to a certain uh, podcast or listening to the word in some way, getting yourself out of bed and going to church even when you don't feel like it and hearing the word there. How is it that you check in into God's word. Um, let's look at Isaiah 6, 9 through 10, and we will hear one way that God works um, to help us check in, in kind of a roundabout way. 
And he said, go and say to this people, he is God, keep on hearing, but do not understand. Keep on seeing, but do not perceive. Make the heart of this people dull and their ears heavy and blind their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their hearts and turn and be healed. In this particular instance, God has said, you will not understand. Uh, this is one way that God works in a roundabout way is that he closes our eyes for a time so they can be opened to him. And this happened with the nation of Israel. You know, he certainly knows that we are the ones checking out, right? <laughs> he knows that that's our sinful selves and he will use that to our benefit even. He will use, now that doesn't mean, okay, we should just check out, right? <laughs> Don't misunderstand. There's always a balance, right? My friend described it this week as a tug of war of, um, you know, the law and the gospel, the tug of war, law and the gospel. But remembering that the gospel fulfills the law, that God, and even our checking out, he will blind us for time. He will uh, bury our heads for a little bit or let us bury our heads for a little bit so that he can open our eyes wide. Um, he was silent between the Testaments. You know, the Old Testament came 400 years of silence. Jesus appears. Um, that's a way that he kind of blinds us so that the light of Christ can shine in when he comes and our eyes can be open to who he is. Uh, one way we can understand this is uh, we call it secondary gains in therapy. And so when you have experienced um, kind of an eye-opening experience, you know new information about your lives now. Uh, so it can be something like really small, like I realized that I have a problem between four and five that nice words don't come out of my mouth unless I eat a snack. <laughs> it can sound really silly, but it's true. It really does affect your home life, right? It affects mine. Um, and I use that example a lot because it is not my best work. Um, but when you have your eyes open to that, now you can do something differently. However, secondary gains is doing something differently makes us want to close our eyes again. Doing something differently creates all other things happening. Um, and so sometimes when we are more gracious, we give grace to our families and we just continue in our vocations and pick up after them and uh, don't say anything and overlook sins and stuff like that, then... Uh, we might have more messes to pick up and people might be even more um, unaware of the fact that we're trying to care for our families, things like that. But God is working in it and he continues to tell us to move ahead, to move ahead. What secondary gains have you experienced? When have your eyes been open to something and then you're like, oh crud, I don't really like this other thing, you know? Maybe our eyes are open to the fact that uh, abortion is a real thing and it's hurtful and it causes deep pain in people, and it keeps us up at night, or we can't stop thinking about it. That's a secondary gain. That means we're gonna have to move ahead and do something differently. We're gonna have to reach out. We're gonna have to volunteer at the pregnancy center. We're gonna have to uh, utilize our resources to help stop abortion, things like that. Uh, maybe there's another example. Uh, there's like really dramatic examples, like when people discover that their husbands are having an affair and they can no longer operate in the way they used to. Their eyes have been opened. And so then they start to move forward and they're, you know, let's work on our relationship. Let's heal this. Let's see our pastor. Let's go to a counselor. And then there's kind of other stuff that opens up. So you have to decide like, and be aware, God is gonna open some other stuff up when we open our eyes. Uh, Satan's lies are that it's easier to keep our eyes closed. It, there'll be less anxiety, less accusations, less conflict, and they're always lies. It's always better on the other side. Might have more junk, might open up some more stuff, but it's always better. It is life abundant in Christ and he is working in it, working in it. So if you can think of any secondary gains, throw those up in the comment. It's kind of a fun thing to learn about. I believe that God has scales and removes them. So like we, we all live with this kind of eyes closed for a certain time when God lets the scales fall off. Like Paul, he was blinded on the road to Damascus. Um, to 
he learns who Jesus is, but then he also has to be cared for and the scales fall from his eyes. And then God reveals truth. I think that happens to us in faith in kind of a big way at some point where the scales fall from our eyes and we're like, I'm going to follow the Lord. Like this is going to look different than it did before. But then also in little ways, that's always happening. Uh, the scales fall off every day when I open the word and I hear about who he is and what he's doing in my life. And I have to, you know, deal with some new stuff. Um, he is always working in a good way in us in that. And God opens our minds and our hearts and our eyes wider to know him, to follow him, and to continue turning to him. He opens our eyes to our sin and we confess and are absolved and all of that every day. And I think you can vision that as scales that fall off. And that's what Paul is helping teach the Galatians. Let's let this other scales fall off. Let's let God reveal something deeper so we can see his full gospel and not just a little tiny piece of it. Um, and, and when we read and read and continue to read and grow, that is what God does is remove those scales, you know, and he'll be doing it our whole life long. Praise the Lord. So how does the spirit work? That's the third thing. The spirit, it says in Galatians 3, 1. I'm going to turn there. Galatians 3, 1. Oh, foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? It was before your eyes that Jesus Christ was publicly portrayed as crucified. Verse 2, sorry. Let me ask you only this. Did you receive the spirit by works of the law or by hearing with faith? So the spirit comes to us. It's not really anything we can control. Um, but... I'm so thankful for parents and for pastors who bring us to baptism who and witnesses who remind us of it um, and remind us that the Spirit is in fact in work at work in us. Um, Ephesians 1.18 gives a little more insight to this. Uh, having the eyes of your heart enlightened that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints? We would not, we, we get an inheritance, we get to become part of the body of Christ in baptism, but in the spirit we have hope. And God can certainly work outside of these ways, but these are ways we know he works. So why would we avoid it, right? Um, we know he works giving us the spirit in baptism, so we run to it. We know that in um, the word, his truth is present, that it is unadulterated truth of Jesus Christ, of what God has done in his Holy Spirit. Uh, we want to run to it. Um, the spirit opens our eyes to hope. And that's not a small thing. There are a lot of people living out there without hope. And I want to tell you that people who do not know the Lord, who don't know Christ, uh, they will not hear this message in the same way. We cannot force people to open their eyes as much as we would like to. God is doing that. God is working. And we just send the word out. And who can we send the word out today? The Spirit works through the word to us, through uh, the sacraments to us, through uh, other people to us sharing the word. Uh, and then we get to do the same. We get to be part of that. We get to help open eyes with his word. And as he opens our eyes, he opens other people's eyes because we're just in this life together. And it's quite a miraculous thing. So who needs to hear the word today? Who can you share that with? Who can you discern with? You know, there's a lot of hard stuff. I'm not saying you just hear the hard stuff and you're like, oh, my eyes are opened and now everything's great. No, uh, open eyes is, is a challenge. Um, but like Paul says, why? Why would we want to remain blind? It sounds more comfortable, but it just isn't in the long run. That's a lie of Satan. And so we discern together. We gather around the word together. And so where are you going to hear the word? Where are you going to have your eyes opened? Who in your life opens your eyes? Um, and considering our worldview. So when, we, when people ask us questions or they want our opinions, where is our worldview coming from? Where is it leading people to? Uh, we can certainly uh, have a worldview that is jaded by the media, that's jaded by the way we grew up. Uh, but remembering that God is the one that people need to hear from. God in us, working in us, he will help us open eyes and open them when we share the word. Otherwise, we're just sharing ourselves and it's it's nice, <laughs> but it's definitely jaded by our view of things. Let's look at 2 Corinthians 6, 
11 through 13 for a little encouragement today. This is really just a theme passage of I Love My Shepherd, and I come back to it again and again. We have spoken freely to you, Corinthians. Our heart is wide open. You are not restricted by us, but you are restricted in your own affections. In return, I speak as the children, widen your hearts also. Our hearts and our eyes are connected in a way that I don't think we can begin to understand. God, when he opens our eyes, he's opening our hearts wider for him. When he opens our hearts wider for him, he's opening our eyes. And those things are reciprocal. So we need the knowledge. We need to see what's going on. We need to hear the word. We need to know the truth. We need to hear the news even and see what's going on in the world around us that's difficult. But... We also need to check in, uh, and God does that through his spirit in us. It's no work of our own, but we can certainly say no thank you and push it down, you know. Um, and so having that, that emotional engagement, of course it's not the foundation of our faith, but it is uh, one of the ways that God will work in us to just widen our hearts for him so he can flood in and darkness is sent far, far away. So freedom in Christ, do we want it? Do we want to remain foolish? Like Paul says, would, would we rather be foolish? Would we rather have our eyes closed? No. So what is God opening your eyes to this week? Tell me, what did you learn in the studies this week? What have you seen on the internet aside from I Love My Shepherd? What is going on in your home, in your community, in your neighborhood? What is God opening your eyes to that might be difficult? It might be just joy, pure joy. Um, but how is it impacting your relationship with him? And where is the word in all that? So tell me, how is God opening your eyes this week? All right, you can find the full Chasing Freedom study on ilovemyshepherd.com. You can find us on the I Love My Shepherd Facebook page, um, on Instagram, on Twitter, and uh, the YouTube channel right here. I love to hear from you all. Don't forget about our prizes. You can look on the I Love My Shepherd Facebook page for that. We have a big one coming up at our Facebook Live tonight, um, and we'll have more for all six weeks of the study. So thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time.